world uh, they will see us online because it was impossible to come to Israel from abroad without quarantine but we will conduct our master course with uh, Israeli students and with Israeli uh, professors and I have great great pleasure um, and honor to introduce you our first master class Amit Pellet an outstanding Israeli cellist and pedagogue Together with two talented students, the stage is your amid. Welcome. Can you hear me well? Yes. yes. Um, it's beautiful, very musical and very personal, which is always great and important. Um, you know, when you play Bach, especially in your stage, where you have auditions, competitions, and people judge you, not just buy a ticket to, to listen to you. Um, 
I think there are three, before we talk about interpretation, because you know, you can't, even in this hall, uh, I'm sure you have some, I know your mother is here and family, but even here, if you please, when you play Bach, half of the people, you're lucky. And, and then the other half might not like it. However, there are three fundamentals that should not be negotiable. And it's your intonation, quality of sound, and sense of pulse. I think all three should be there, so don't let anybody when you do audition, competition, or in concert, in real life, don't let anybody say, well, it's so beautiful, but maybe a better cello. It's a little nasal, or it's not in tune, or she can't keep the pass. So first, I want to start with those three uh, elements. There's one that uh, bothered me a little bit, and it's the quality of sound. It's the quality of sound even in this beautiful hall, and it's on your A string. So basically, uh, I don't know if you hear it in the audience, but the higher you go, you express your emotions with kind of not good motion, which is the higher you go, you do. So you, you show us that it's getting more exciting by lifting your body. Imagine if you would be a singer and you do ta da di da and you would reach the high note with your eyebrows. Ta da di da di da 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 di da. No, we do the opposite. Da, da, di, da, di, da, da. So stand, stand for a second, stand up. If we would be singers, your gravitation point would be one, would be your feet on the ground, you know, if you play violin. When we play cello, we have two gravitation points that we can lean to. One of them is your sitting bones, your butt on the chair. And the other one is your feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. And you have to play between them. And you, even with heels, with high heels, you express your emotions, you do and you lift your feet and you stay and then it looks great but as you go up which we will talk about musically as you reach a higher note you actually become softer so you express it by a instead of there's no core to the sound when you go up so the first thing I want to uh, experience with you is how to gravitate the sound. Let's imagine that uh, I'm just trying to put rules into music. It's hard. So for the first four position, I want you to gravitate to bounce towards the chair. So if you play, just if you play C sharp, D, E. Well, when you get to G, try to gravitate towards your feet. Just try to do this. You do. Can you do this? Look, if I play, if I put my back up and I squeeze my butt, now I melt on the chair. When I go up, yeah, I don't feel it in your sound. Try. I know I'm, tr I'm a big uh, picky cello policeman, <laughs> but on the G you do, <laughs> you li don't lift your feet, plant it to the ground. You're like, Bravo. Now, the, sec the second point is your bow. Uh, you know, I want to tell you a story uh, that maybe because you live in New York now. Um, so I once went uh, many years ago to, to rehearse my bow at Rene Morel. You know, the great story, to, he, he's not alive anymore. And I was just sitting there waiting for my, my turn. And then came a, a violinist from Juilliard, I think, or one of those schools, and uh, she brought her um, bow to Rene Morel. You know, he had this very thick uh, French accent. And he looked and he said, very bad, very bad. Zuckerman and Perelman don't have rosin on one side. Look. No. <laughs> you're, you, you basically, and, and he said, they play with all the hair. Now, I'm not saying you should do it all the time. That, don't get me wrong, but as a, a sort of home base. You're playing like this, so I hear the stick. You play with one hair and stick, so we only see, and that was maybe the best cello lesson I got in my life for the bow. 
It was from René Morel shouting at a violinist at Juilliard. <laughs> Uh, why do you play? This, oh, it has this fufu sound to it. Can you try? Now, when you move all the hair, do it with your thumb. Don't, don't move the entire arm. No, but, but let, let's do the A string first. Yeah. yeah, it's much better, but I just want you to know it will be weird. This is all the hair. Your, your mother paid for this, <laughs> you're using this. <laughs> Just that you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, so we talked about two elements now for sound. One is a gravitation point to help you with sound. Two is how much hair you want. Three is the speed of the bow. I want to show you something. If I play a low D on the C string, very slow bow and comfortable weight into my butt. Sounds OK. If I play the same D here, same speed, same weight, what will happen? Yeah, which means, going back to singing, the higher you sing, the more air you need. Ta, pa, pa. Same here. For so the same quality here, with a slow bow, I need 10 times more bow. So having said that, when you go on the A string with all the hair and the gravitation point, try to also increase the speed. You go into the string. Increase the speed. If I do the same fingering on C string, Let's see if you can do it. So all three elements. Yeah. Are you happy with the sound? Okay. There's a sense of pressure, of intensity in the sound. Can you have movement and weight? So if you create the sound, create it with movement and weight, not with pressure. And all the weight down to the chair. Good. Now one one last thing, and again, this is you, your ear is your judge. Your ear is your judge. It's like you have to take one of your ears, pay hundred fifty dollars, put it right there, and listen. Yeah. So if if your ear is your judge and you really listen as you go up on the cello. It's not as beautiful. So can you try now to be, when you play a down bow, to be a little bit above the string with your elbow and to pull it. And on an up bow, below the string. Above, below, above, below. Above. Yeah, no, no, no. Just do this. It has to look as if you're crossing strings. Yeah. Bravo. Bravo. That's already $10,000 better cello. Yeah? Now, let's add to it before we talk about the music, one, because I wish it would have more time. Um, one more thing is body movement. If you agree with me that as you go up on the cello, you need more bow, more bow is more movement. More movement should create reaction to the movement. So if I take my hand from here, to here, I don't need to do much. But as I go away, yeah, my body, if it's relaxed, my gravitation point, yeah, will start reacting. Yeah, if I take my iPhone and I give it to you, I will lean on one side. Yeah. So when you play on C string, yeah, we don't we don't need much ball. Now as I go to A string, my body. Body should be involved, and you are you're resisting the movement. So, can you try when you get on the A string to have a little bit of body movement? No, wait, 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 wait. Keep your roots down. No, 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 no. No. Be 
responsible for every note, for the quality, even in pianissimo, below. No. When you do this, you kill the sound. It looks good, it's a good photo, but... Bravo. And use all the hair. More bow now. Bravo. But keep your keep point. Well, stop, stop. Mom paid for this. <laughs> That's much better. So sound production is your responsibility. It's not, okay, I'll, I'll buy a better cello. No, it's a big box, it can ring, it can react. You have to do more with it. Now let's go back to the beginning and talk a little bit about uh, reaching high notes. Yeah? Um, I remember once uh, playing Schumann concerto for Boris Pergamenchikov was my teacher. And uh, since I like to smoke cigars a little bit, and he liked it too, um, he had a cigar ashtray at home. And as I'm playing it, uh, he says, Amit, can you lift my cigar ashtray? Okay, sure. You know, cigar ashtray is really big and heavy because you don't uh, kill the ash, you let it. So I take it and like, oh, it's really heavy. He says, okay, now put it down. He says, that's how you should make music. That's music. It's like gravitation. When, you take, when I have to lift something away from gravity, it's hard. It takes time. But when I release it back home to the ground, it's a release. So when you play Bach, even three notes, one, two, three, release. You do, you do it with your body. But the La is actually, not only the La, most of them are less than the first note. You do. No. Go to this note with vibrato and bow steam. Now, as I'm climbing up, I'm going away from gravity. It takes more time. This note. I'm on the top of the Alps now. I'm not jumping from a cliff. It's gradual. And I'm in base camp. Now I climb. Once my other teacher, Greenhouse, told me, just simply take a pencil when you play Bach and draw the line. It will be a beautiful painting of hills. There are no cliffs, hills. So and when you climb a hill, it's hard to get up, easier to get down. Let's see if you can do it more, because you expressed it physically, but not necessarily cellistically. Yeah. Can you sing it once? Sing it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hear. I, I, I don't, I'm not saying it's bad or good or bad. What? I, I don't hear it. Ah. I don't hear it. When you sing, when you play, you express it. Why? I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm just being, again, I'm being your ear out there. Just tell me why. Uh, no, I didn't hear it. Okay, so sing it once again. Okay, now let's do it with a cello. <laughs> Again, I, I would not do the open string, but it's okay. It's, it's you. You, you. You can do it. Um, something you want to say on the A. Um, you're playing an open string and you say it with a bow, but you say it in the middle of the bow. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a fact. Mm -hmm. If you would sing, like if you go to take a shower and sing, di -da -da, da -di -da -da, fine, <laughs> I rest my case. But I know you wouldn't do it because you're musical. Yeah? Can you just try for me? And again, after this lesson, don't ever do it again. Don't ever do it again. Just one, two, the first note, a little bit vibrato, 
what I call bouncing. It's not even, you can't even hear it. It's just to make hierarchy. And not, no, not this. Yeah. Okay, and again, just try, don't do it when you play a concert, but for me, can you show me the hierarchy of the first three notes with a um, tiny bit of vibrato, a little bit more, and then land on it as an arrival. No, not this, God forbid, no, no. But just to address the fact that this is the important note. Yeah, you can still do, I'm sorry, you do... No, Can you do this, look? Now, I, you know how you jump on a trampoline? You jump and bounce. Do the same. Jump. Jump. Right away. Yeah, it's, you're doing a little bit what I call machine vibrato. You do... Try to do bounce. So you can't really hear it too much, but it's uh, like voice. It's exactly like voice. Bravo. Now that should be the top. Let's see what happened before. Try. Okay, let's do it once without the bow. Look at your hand and sing. Try. Just. Bravo. Now just add the bow instead of your mouth. That's okay, it's okay. Forget about the wolf. You keep going. Yeah, so here's the same, the same uh, idea that you have moving notes. What do we do with moving notes? A lot of people just neglect it. You don't vibrate them. But there's another way to vibrate. If your vibrato is only... You can't do moving notes. However, if it becomes what I call grandma vibrato, which is just, you know, you, it's just a, a gentle shake of your hand. It allows you to have life on moving notes. It's great. And it's not, it's not offensive even to Baroque players because they can't hear it. But you give the hierarchy. Now I start almost nothing. Look, moving notes. Maybe the only note I will do a touch of machine vibrato would be uh, will be there. That's it. Okay, can you try? Less. Yeah, look. Look, look, you do this. Beautiful. Sing it once. Yeah, you see what I said about lifting the ashtray. It's difficult, now it's a release. I would not, uh, singing in the shower, yeah, it won't happen. And it didn't happen when you sang it. So I wouldn't do this crescendo going down. Bravo. Now, can you support it? No. That's it. Bravo. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. But <laughs> Okay, good. It, it's, I have to say that it's very beautiful to begin with. Yeah? I'm not, uh, as I said, if you play like this, half of people would love it. The cellist wouldn't because they're jealous and so on. But I'm trying to make you aware of what you're doing. So I, I'm basically raising a question. You're, you should have to have the answer. You're still doing crescendo as you're expressing. Now, 
you might say, I want to, which is good. Now I'm asking you not to do it just for me, to see if you're able, if you're flexible, which is one of two most important qualities of musician, to be flexible. The second one is to be curious. That's it. So, because you're going to play with other people in your life. I mean, if, if you play a concerto with a conductor that is more famous than you, which is usually the case, you have to be flexible on the spot, you have to do it. So I'm just, I want to see if you're able to climb a mountain, but within the climb, you decline. Mm -hmm. I like it. Within the climb, you decline. So, you climb, now I decline, but still, I still climb. Yeah, tell me a story, but the story should have heels. Yeah, try. Go down to the A. Now start a new sentence. Bravo. Now, can, maybe the last point, can we add your natural breathing to the music? And it's not just to inhale, it's to exhale air. Mm -hmm. You do this. See you at the end. Out. Now it goes out. Just keep your mouth a little open and let the air flow. Yeah? The vibe, the vibe is a fa fa fa. Bravo. Diminuendo. Climb. Now breathe. Inhale, inhale. with the body expressed with the cello sound yeah so you always you go up by showing us the importance of the note but not by making it sound important try from the B flat Bravo. Now I have a question for you, then we're done. Um, if this would be a building, this prelude would be a building, where would be the basement and where would be the duplex at the top? Um, the basement, I mean, how I looked at it was the base, not the... Uh, Can you play it? Can you play that bar or the uh, this bar? Okay. So, but I'm 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 asking about the whole prelude. If I look at the prelude and it's a building, uh, okay, sorry. it's a building, and I look. This is the second suite prelude, and it's a beautiful building, and it has for rich people duplex at the top, but it also has a basement. Mm -hmm. So, as an architect of music, if I look at it, so when I go on stage and my heart is beating and I'm nervous, and I know I have to present to them this building. So I start and I, sh I draw the building for them. Oh, okay. Where would be the, the lowest, absolutely lowest point? Where would be the, the absolutely loudest point? Um, the lowest point I would say would be the beginning. Um, and the highest point would be uh, the... Yeah, okay, with this I agree. Now my next question is why? I mean, I just want, and, and again, we can argue about it, but why is the beginning the softest and why is this the loudest? For you. Um, because I feel this is uh, how we build. Um, I mean, it's, I'm thinking about phrases. Uh, and about I, I'll, I'll share with you one more uh, experience I had about, because I feel, uh, once, uh, when I was young, um, Isaac Stern used to come a lot to Israel. So one of the time I played for him, and he asked me, Amit, why do you do this? 
And I said, because I feel blah, blah, blah. He said, if you tell me again that you feel something, I kick you out of here. I need a reason. I know that you feel. That's why I like you. That's why you play for me. I know that you feel. Why is this the softness? So you can tell me it's harmony. You can tell me this. You can tell me whatever. But if, again, if this is for you, for life, if you feel that this is the softest, maybe you need a better answer. I can share with you what my teachers share with me, um, in particular Greenhouse. He told me, I mean, just make it simple. The lowest note, the softest. The highest point, uh, note, the loudest. Sometimes you contradict it, but he said, you know, he, he was 81 back then, he said, with my life experience, it always works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, that doesn't mean a lot, but um, if I just look at it, that would be for me. So if I start D minor, I go on a walk, then I go to major, happy, still go on the walk, and then I get here. And I'm reaching the highest note soon. More. I'm thinking of green out now. That's the one. Yeah. Just play safe. Now, sometimes you can contradict. You can say, well, maybe the harmony. But in general, it works. So I want you, before we finish, to play the bar before the C sharp. And I want you, like an architect, to build it. Play, go into pianissimo and build into fortissimo. Let's see if you can build the basement and the duplex in one frame. And then, thank you. More. More. Now use the body. Take time. Again. Good. <laughs> Bravo.
Bravo. Again, beauty, beautiful playing, both of you. Great, very musical. Um, you know, we, as obvious as it can be here on stage, I mean, I'm a giant trying to play this miniature cello, and you are, are much uh, smaller than me. We're playing the same cello, the same music, the same bow, so we have different physiques for the same instrument. So I, I'm saying this because we have to find what can our body help us with in order to create beauty with a cello, to create quality. And then because of it, on top of it, to be, it's like a house. What are the four fundamentals, four walls, that you can build in order to then decorate a house? What would they be? And uh, what you do is uh, very interesting. If I would put a little piece of wood above your head to measure your height right now, when you're just hanging, and then you would start playing, you actually become like five centimeters taller when you play. You express your emotions with this motion. Which is a very typical cellist thing. You also add to it the bird. You know what's the bird? You open your wings. <laughs> you know, when I told people today in the lessons, where, uh, having heard so many hundreds of cellists through the years, I don't know, thousands, there are three ways I always see people sit and listen to me talk. One of them is what you do now, is this. And it's amazing, it's all over the world. Second one is this. <laughs> and third one is this. Now you can test me. I never see anything else. Look, you're like, you're a human now listening to another human talking. Today in the lesson I had somebody uh, like this, somebody like this. Never in my life I've seen somebody listening to me talk like this. <laughs> Sure, I'll try. I'll practice more next week. <laughs> no, it's not human. But you have to understand with your physics to do that, it's a killer for the cello. So you do this and you become taller. So maybe my job is to teach you different motions to express the same emotions. Yeah? One of them would be what I said before, to bounce down to a gravitation point. Not to break your spine, don't ever do that. Spine is straight. However, your sitting bones, you can bounce your weight down. So maybe the most important thing for you is to learn how to bounce down or here and to drop your elbows like now. Look, when you drink water in the cafeteria for lunch, do you ever drink like this? No. So hold the glass, I'll show you what I call the dinner posture. Dinner posture. Hold your fork imaginary fork to eat. You eat, yeah? Hold your glass of water. Uh, drink water, eat your pasta. That's a dinner posture, the most human posture. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You can play piano like this. You can play violin like this. You can play flute. You can eat like this. You can write emails like this. You can talk on the phone like this. And you can play cello like this. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how. <laughs> So if you want to put, by the way, the dinner posture, I, maybe I've said this before here on a master class, it's something I learned not from a cellist. I learned it from Daniel Barenboim's autobiography. There's a whole chapter he speaks about the, when he started playing the piano in, uh, in Argentina, and his father was his teacher. He said, my father told me to sit in front of the piano, to put my hands on the piano as if I'm eating dinner, and to play, and at the end of the chapter. That was his only piano technique lesson. And, and uh, while I'm reading it, I said, wait, 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 wait. let's backtrack a little bit. What, what, what did you just say? <laughs> Put your hands on the piano as if you're eating dinner and playing. So I started thinking, okay, that's piano, but dinner, we, we eat, he's a genius, I'm not, but we still eat the same way. So, you know, I tried to figure out how do I eat, and I figure out it's a frog and fourth position. That's the ultimate position. Put your finger on B flat. You know this piece? It's like dinner eating. So put your bow in the frog, hang on it, hang on it, and second finger on B flat. Yeah, now bounce your lower back to the chair. Yeah, no, don't break your spine. Straight, but your sitting bone muscles are just bouncing. Yes, look, listen to my sound. If I stretch, I don't vibrate now. Now I bounce. It's like singer. 
That's the difference. So if I produce sound well with my body, then I can start decorating. This is not sound production. It's decoration, creation, decoration. In order to create, I need weight and speed. I do not need pressure. So I need weight. You need to find your weight by bouncing and then speed. And then you decorate the creation. So try to play a B flat. Yeah, now, doing this is also wrong because you don't eat like this. You know, your elbow is very flexible. Yeah, you put it in the steak, you eat, you go, very flexible. So, think of the elbow as the lungs of the cello. You fill it up and release it, like an accordion. Yeah, and I, I have to show the audience because I think it's a cellist epidemic. Um, the amount of hair. <laughs> Just use all the hair. Use all the hair, you'll get... Yes. Now, the more you go down to the bridge, the more resistance you have, the more movement you need. If you play, if you press it, you're going to kill it. So, when you go down, you need body movement and to be above and below the string. Don't ever be on top of it. Above on a down bow. Try. Bravo. Now, when you express, like you do, can you do it with this motion? Now, you want to express more? Maybe sideways, maybe bouncy, but not up with wings. Try. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Roots on the ground, yes. So the movement is here. Imagine that you are a tree. Those are the roots. It's planted to the ground. They're non-negotiable. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to be picky with these fundamentals, but can we do once, can you put your cello on your left side? And we do an exercise I call the grandma rocking chair. Okay? We're going to rock on a chair. Okay? And as we rock on the chair, just try to feel the movements of your body coming down to your feet. You can join me. You too, if you want. But <laughs> you too, I don't care. But try to find that movement eventually will lift you up. Look, I start to be away from the chair until, opa, I'm standing. Janos Starker used to say, even though he had a small sound, but he used to say he was a great cellist, if you're a soloist with orchestra and there's fire backstage, you should be the first one to run away. <laughs> but that's the feeling. Now, let's try to do it and stand up. Do it. So find your gravitation point and stand up. Now, don't move your feet. Look down. Do you see that your feet, as a human, forget about cello, do you see that you're kind of parallel to your shoulders? I mean, your weight is planted equally from right to left. That's normal. Don't do this. It's just, it's painful. You can't walk like this. You can't do anything. You plant yourself so the weight goes naturally to the feet. Now, don't move your feet. Sit down and open the knees just enough, just enough to put the cello on what I call a, a golden triangle between the end pin on the floor the cello on your left knee and your heart. That's it. That's the triangle that holds the cello and incorporates it into your body. Now simply hug your cello. Yeah. Now if you tell me that this is not human, you're not human. <laughs> you should, in the most exciting moment when you play, you're like, that's where I need you to be human. So you can control everything you do, okay? So having this in mind, can you start the beginning? Yeah, can you start, start? Stand up, stand up. You become Charlie Chaplin. What took you two notes? Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> 
Can you, uh, again, you don't have to take it or leave it. It's your, your thing. But if you take voiceless and if you look at Pavarotti, you look at Domingo, you look at those people, when they think they don't do this stuff, it's not in your feet. Yeah, it's not in your feet, okay? Think about it now when you play, not just about the phrase. Bravo. Breathe. Yeah, good. Better, no? Much better. Now, when you start this piece, um, I'm jumping between subjects here, but let's imagine that we worked on it and now you are free to make sound. Now you're telling me a story. Can you tell me what do you think about when you start this piece? If, I'm just throwing it to the air, like, what, what year are we in now? Mm, you have to Google it again. <laughs> like, let's, do, let's say it like this. Imagine, and I'm not trying really to embarrass you, I'm trying to make you aware and curious. When you, let's imagine that you are an actress, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a movie, and I'm still Steven Spielberg, and you are, I don't know, Nicole Kidman, and you are... Tom Cruise, and we're making a big movie, and I found this script by Shostakovich. And I, I love it, it's amazing. So I call you and say, hey, Nicole, I want you to be the main character. Can you come in a week to my house? We do a reading of this uh, script. I'm sending you, don't show it to anybody. I give you $20 million, come in one week. Uh, we do, you and Tom, we're doing a reading in my house, and we'll have lunch after. You say, oh, sure, wow, wonderful. You get the email. What do you do during the week? Yeah, like, who am I? How old am I? Where am I? What kind of dress? What kind of accent? What, so that, that basic question, when, when we start, the year, 1934. Um, how old is, again, I'm just asking questions. How old is Shostakovich? 29, yeah, 8, 9. What happens in his life when, when you start this? Great. Um, any kind of juicy love story, something that can ignite? Uh, because of what? You know, he wrote this opera, Lady Macbeth, mm -hmm. and it's the same time. And th this is opus, w which opus is this piece? 40. 40, yeah. So do you know what's opus 39, opus 41? Just, anyway, this around Lady Macbeth, I mean, he had, a, he had an affair with a person from the production. And uh, I mean, literally, it happens around that time, he's going home after the summer, after the production. He's going home to tell his now wife that he's uh, divorcing her. And sort of, I'm making it dramatic, but sort of what is happening is he's excited. So this is like, sort of like a train or moving. Yeah, he's going home and he's excited. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to say, you know, I'm in love with this girl, but you know what he finds out? That she's married. She's pregnant, his wife. So he couldn't do what his heart wanted him to do. And I think it's very important to know this when you play. So what I want to, know, to do now is I want to see that in, if in the beginning you can be aware more of the pulse of the piece, of the movement, and then we're going to jump to the second theme and discuss it and see how it, this can be related to the, to the story. Um, and can you start and repeat it a little bit? So you come in whenever you feel you can join the train. Don't count. Yeah, so, sorry, is it possible for you more to, like a string quartet, the cello? Play the cello? Yeah, no, you know, if I would be the cello, I would, I would be fired, yeah? It's a, you go to the next note and then the viola. Yeah, 
Do you realize, as the first violinist, yeah? You have the viola, you have the, the cello. Do you realize that you're playing eight notes with the viola? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You're doing this. Uh, leave me alone to do what I want. Yeah, but try once to really play as a quartet. I mean, play the eighth note with the viola. La -di -do -di -di. Just flow with it. Yeah, bravo, much better. I have to uh, say something about Chaim because I once had a, a lesson with him when I was much younger on Brahms F major sonata. It's my memory, you get stuck, but it was a second movement um, of Brahms F major. And then comes the theme. But then later on it comes back. And Chaim told me, what, what are you doing different here? And why are you doing it differently? And of course, I didn't know. And he says, the answer is always in the piano part. A good composer will, will make the piano part different. Yeah, and that really changed my concept. Like, when, whenever you play something, listen to the piano part to get the answer, what to play. So here, I think you really have to flow with the eighth notes. The second theme, let's hear what the piano is doing in the second theme. So when you start, oh, dee -da. Yeah, can, just because we don't have time, can she start from her? Yeah, so tell me where, where is uh, the composer telling you not to take time and where he allows you a little bit to take time? Yeah, so can you a little bit, the octave, vocalize it, but then, can you vocalize it when you can and then follow the order more? Again, here, you know, if you played just the cello part, just the cello part, um, you go to the high note, and then it's like falsetto, yeah? Mm -hmm. However, listen to the piano part, to the harmony. Mm -hmm. The harmony tells, he, Shostakovich is telling you what to do. Difference. Listen to the D now, what she has. It's all a result of the D. La, da, D. So can you be aware of it more? So it's like he's telling you what to do. He really tells you what to do. Okay, try. Sideways. Bravo. Take time. Let her decide. Yeah, again, again, again. Bravo. Now I have a question for you, and maybe you have a good answer. Why in the middle of beauty, in the middle of the most beautiful line, la di di da ah, why, why are you playing harmonic? Ah, oh, no. Is it because it's comfortable? No. Then it's not good enough. I'm sorry. You know, a lot of people, I told somebody today, a lot of cellists, uh, this is a famous one, Brahms clarinet trio. Mm -hmm. You know how, how many famous cellists play? I, I can't stand it. I mean, why? Why? Or uh, Archduke trio. <laughs> Why? Same here. I mean, I don't... Why? Or can you try? Mm -hmm. Maybe, I, I know it's a different fingering, but this note has hierarchy in the phrase. Mm -hmm. 
from the beginning? Yeah, la da di si do re and be sensitive to the re. Can you try 413 and then deal with the F sharp later? Yeah, what do you think? It's, so, it's difficult, but it's much better. Now, just having this in mind, go back to the beginning mm -hmm. and play it according to the piano part. Eighth notes together. Yeah, bravo, much better. So if I hear in sonata form, I hear two themes. One that has this character flowing, moving, yeah, sort of going on the train, very positive to to change my life in a positive way, and then comes this tragic, and the piano allows you, the, the, the orchestration sort of allows you to do it. If you start at the beginning, if I would ask you, is it sneaking in or saying here I am? Is it like, here I am everybody, or is it sneaking in? What do you think? What is better to sneak in with, down or up bow? Up bow because of weight, I'm just talking, this is you're dictated by your weight, here you have to implant your weight. It's not, there's no weight. You have to put it. Can you try once to sneak in on an abo? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? It's much better. Now, uh, I wish we have more time, but one last point. Mm -hmm. One last point, sorry. Um, do you know what's appoggiatura? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the idea of tension and release. Um, in music, we have so many of those. Tiram, I mean, in, if Schumann and Brahms, we call it Clara, Clara, yeah? Here, there's no Clara, yeah? But it's the same idea, and all your Claras become Clara. <laughs> All of them. Like, not one. You do... No. Clara, Clara, Clara. Yeah? You always go to the uh, weak beat and you emphasize it. Why? It's easier cellistically. Can you try once to really follow the uh, gesture of... Not more vibrato, less vibrato, more bow, less bow. Just that one. Please. Yeah, so more. Every note. Try to, to say what you want to say with your amount of vibrato. Mm -hmm. Bravo. No, no. It's, please. Usually important notes are on weaker fingers, are higher. I'm sorry, pinky is weaker. I don't care. T start on the G. T -do.
do si no again sorry to <laughs> no yeah please yeah the next question which we're not going to work on but is just for you to ask is when do you make slides they shouldn't be only when you feel is comfortable musically you play would you sing like this yeah so your finger is a lot of the time yeah a lot of the time you slide just because it's there sing once the beginning Okay, play once exactly the same way. Yeah, this now comes a finger. <laughs> Imitate your voice. Are you happy? Okay, now, now you're thinking, exactly. You start listening to yourself very, very uh, methodically, like you are in the audience, and then you hear, I'm making a slide. Do I want a slide? Do I sing like it? Does it make sense? If it does, okay. But if it doesn't, you start figuring out what to do to avoid it, because this is your voice. It's your voice. And as Greenhouse told me all the time, you will be judged by your voice. Not how fast you play, how loud you play. There's always somebody that plays louder and faster. But it's your voice that defines you. So if you really listen to your voice, understand it, and imitate it, you have a chance, more chance to be yourself. That's it. OK, thank you.